So this segment is about handmade reeds and why they're best. And we're asking you to spend a little bit more money for a handmade product. And I think it's important that you know why it's a good investment for you. So I want to start by talking about why a well-functioning reed is important even at the beginner level. Lots of people, you know, throw um, $8, $10 reeds at a beginner and expect them to learn and progress. And it may just not be possible with, because the equipment isn't working. So uh, for beginners, they really need a fighting chance of succeeding and continuing with the instrument. For intermediates, they're beginning to do more of the right things and they should be getting good feedback uh, from their efforts. And that's just not always possible with machine reads and reads that aren't nuanced or designed to meet the needs of a particular player. Um, and this is a fork in their career. You know, the, I tend to put beginners and intermediates in a category of sort of music education, personal development, but then comes a fork in the road where an intermediate will or will not make an investment in terms of their long-term um, musical uh, uh, requirements or um, goals, I should say. For the advanced player, you know, they pro the advanced players really don't need to uh, hear a tutorial on why handmade is better. They already know they've if they've gone through a bunch of machine reads. They know that often they don't work. They don't they don't really do what uh, advanced players need them to do, and that is a very it requires a very skilled um, read making uh, to be able to have a read perform for an advanced player. So in terms of the value proposition, you know, there are really two thresholds. Does the read work? And then if, if it meets that threshold, how well does it work? So here's the truth about read making, and certainly in terms of the handmade read maker. And that is that our capacities for doing truly handmade work are no more than 300 reads a month. Any more than that and running the business and doing everything else is really quite impossible and it's more of a labor of love than anything else when and so our our pricing reflects the labor that we put into it and the containment of our capacity when the price goes down and there's and you know and there are machine reads that could be eight dollars or ten dollars uh, the volume goes up so it greatly exceeds the capacity of any reed maker to be able to keep up with it. And it's just not economically feasible. It breaks down the body. It's just not something that a, that a reputable handmade reed maker would do. So when you start to see um, reeds that are under the $12, $13 range at, uh, for student and intermediates and below the $18 range for professionals, professional grades, you, you need to consider the fact that it's probably machined because it the volumes for those are so great. Now there is a market that clearly there's a market because they exist, but I'm not sure that that will be the market for you. After all, you're watching this video, so I know you're a serious oboe student. So when we talk about the function of the reed and why handmade is really important, the first thing we need to consider is the nature of cane itself. And it's a highly, highly sensitive agricultural product. That, and, we ask, and we torture it with all kinds of processing and and we gouge it and we shape it and we profile it and we're asking it to do something that it never felt it was intended to do. And it's quite traumatic for them. We also, we also, be, besides that, uh, every uh, stalk of cane actually is uh, somewhat different from each other. And, uh, and it, the composition is different, the, the density is different, different, the hardness is different, and even the diameter. 
And all those things affect the size of the opening, the way it will perform. And all those things are not necessarily apparent right up front. So when I pick up a, a reed or, or a blank that I have made to start with it, I start by taking some scrapes and then I say, oh, okay, now I know what I'm working with. I'm working with a reed that is moderately, you know, moderately hard. I've looked at the aperture that has not been clipped and I said, okay, I can expect this, this, and this. I, so I take some cane off. You can hear that it's relatively hard and I will clip it and see what I have and let it rest for a day. And then I will do more. And the feedback that I get based on each step in the, in the process tells me what to do. Compare that to a machine read that goes from a blank through a machine to finish in somewhat in some precision uh, that does not take into account all the variabilities in the cane itself. So it's a little analogous to getting a haircut and everybody's getting the same haircut whether you want it or not. But the prop and, and with hair you can't put it just like in cane you can't put the cane back after it's been taken out. In the case of hair it will grow back. The case of cane it will not but in the but also when it's a machine read with no feedback mechanisms it doesn't matter whether they took out too much or in the wrong areas it will go through the process because it's it's been precision machined and it will go out to the public no matter what the uh, actual result is so the failure rates of these are much higher and and we and if you're just if you're looking for a read that functions and if you're looking for something reliable and if you're looking for something more nuanced it really takes a skilled handmade read maker to make that work so what are the signs that your read might be machined as i said the price point that you look at might be much lower than what you would find on a handmade read site and we talked about that. If it looks too cookie cutter, if all the if the bottom, the base of this stroke is completely even across, and there is no there's no uh, changes, or if the tip looks very abrupt, if if you buy three and they all look exactly the same, now there is a um, you know there will be similarities in read styles, but they if they look completely the same then it may be a sign that you're getting a machine read and if you know you're buying a machine read you know you take your chances if you think you're buying something else then you probably ought to know the um, European reads and I'm not there are just a couple of European uh, brands that you can find on big box sites and you, you can tell who they are because they've got a different look. It's not an American scrape, it's a European scrape which is a U and it's very short. And those are all machined and uh, you're not gonna and, and you you gotta take what you get. Uh, another sign is that the reeds are epoxied or wired and that is because when reeds are machined they uh, open up in a particular way that have to be closed artificially to be able to keep them sealed. So this is um, this is the fundamental of reed making, and you know there's a reason why handmade is better. Uh, there's a reason why professionals make their own reeds and why uh, students like to uh, either get reads from their teachers who uh, can make them in real time with their students or from reputable read makers who are the next best best thing. So if you have any questions please write me I'm happy to answer them and I will post 
some ver the most interesting ones on my blog for everybody to learn from. So enjoy the rest of the site and I look forward to the next video with you.